The next part of this lesson is going to focus on some of the most interesting operators that are defined in Project Reactor's mono class. These are the so-called combining operators. And these operators create a mono from multiple monos. And we'll talk about the zip with, zip when, and first with signal operators that are part of the mono interface. We'll start with the zip with method. This method is used to combine two results into one result after both of the two results emit. So what does this look like? Well, it's actually passed in two parameters. The first parameter is a second mono, which we call other. And the second parameter is a by function. And what this by function does is it combines the results from this mono, the one that's making the call to zip with, and the other mono to create a new object by using the combinator or combiner, combinator, like terminator, the combinator by function. And you can see a by function is, is a type that's defined, it's a functional interface that's defined in the Java 8 spec and beyond that's used to combine two operations together and return a result. What it does essentially, if you think about it from a, a logic perspective, it returns a mono that emits the combined results. So this is essentially doing logical conjunction. So it's conjoining the two together. This particular method can be used to transform the type and or the value of the elements that it processes in a bit like map or flat map or flat map many. So things can change the value, they can change the type. And this is a really interesting and powerful method. Here is an example of how this can be used. As you can see here, we go ahead and make ourselves two big fractions asynchronously, which we call M1 and M2. And then we return M1 zipped with M2. And what we're going to do as our combinator is we're going to add the results that are emitted from M1 to the result that's emitted from M2. And then a mono to that combined result will be returned as the result of zip with. So we're basically adding the results together after the asynchronous computation is complete. So the whole thing here can be done asynchronously, which is pretty cool. There's a similar method that's part of RxJava's single class called zipwith, same name, same behavior. We'll talk about that when we talk about uh, singles in RxJava later. These methods are also very similar to Java's completable futures method called then combine, which can be used to combine two different completable futures when they complete. Very much the same idea, very much the same syntax and use case. Let's now move on and talk about the zip method. And this is a bit of a generalization of zip with. What it does is it aggregates a bunch of given monos into a single new mono after they all emit, emit and are all combined. So that's zip. So you can think of zip as basically taking zip with and pumping it full of steroids to give it more interesting behavior. The parameter that's passed to uh, zip, there's actually two parameters. The first one is a function, which is the combinator or combiner. And the second one is essentially a var args list or array of monos. So this can be a variable size number. You could have one, you could have a dozen or whatever. And we'll see in a moment how the combinator is used in order to be able to work with an arbitrary number of monos that are passed as the second to nth parameters to zip. Zip returns a mono that emits the combined results. As I mentioned before, the way things work with zip with and with zip is that it can make changes to the value and or the type of the elements that it processes works and effectively in the same way we've seen for some of the other methods that do transformations as well, just that these are doing combinations as well as transformations. Here's a very interesting example. We'll, we'll look in this example in a lot more detail later. So if you don't feel like you have a good feeling after looking at what I cover here, either go take a look at the source code at the link at the bottom of the slide, or just wait until we get to the case study at the end of this lesson. So what this is doing is this is going ahead and making three asynchronous big fractions, M1, M2, and M3. So we're asynchronously creating three big fractions. And then we're going to call mono.zip to combine them together. So we're basically going to add up the results of M1 plus M2 plus M3, and the combiner is going to do that. And when we get to the case study, you'll see exactly how this works. It's really, really interesting and really, really cool. 
There's something very similar in RX Java. They have something called the single.zip array method that works the same as the zip method, just a slightly different name for, for reasons I don't quite understand, but that's just the history of the two projects that have kind of diverged in certain naming conventions. The next method we're going to talk about is, is similar in spirit, but it works in a slightly different way. But I think you'll quickly understand how it works and why it works in a slightly different way. This method is called first with signal. And what it does is you give it essentially a var args list or array of monos, and it will simply pick the first mono to emit any signal, which could be a value, an empty completion, an error or whatnot. And then it'll go ahead and replay that signal. As you can see here, what it's really doing is it's taking all this, the monos that are passed in and it's picking the fastest one. So it's saying, I've got a whole bunch of monos. I'm going to pick the one that completes first. So it's kind of a race to see which one gets there first. Um, it's kind of like the Java called, the Java method that's called uh, invoke any, which will just call one of a number of callables in a collection and whichever one finishes first takes the result of that. So essentially what it's doing is it's returning a new mono that behaves like the fastest of the different sources. And you can think of this as essentially logical disjunction. It's kind of an or, it takes whichever one gets done first. All the other ones that didn't finish or that, that didn't finish first are disposed of. So their results will simply be ignored and any resources will be cleaned up. So here's a very interesting example. We'll go through this example again in a lot more detail later, but just to get to whet your appetite to know what this is about or how you could use it. What we're going to do here is we're going to create ourselves two monos, QM and HM. And both of these monos are going to perform two different sort routines on a list. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and do quick sort in parallel, and we're going to do heap sort in parallel. And we're going to start both of those operations off and running. Let's say it's a big list. And then we're going to go ahead and say return mono first with signal for Q, M, and H, M. And so what that's doing is it's saying, I don't care which of these sort routines finish first, since they're running in parallel, just pick the results for the first one, return that, and dispose of the other results. So this is a good example of what you can do with modern multi-core processors, where you've got more processing than you know what to do with. You can simply have a little contest and pick the one that runs the fastest. So you don't have to sit there and analyze asymptotic time complexity or do some kind of uh, analysis to figure out which sorting algorithm is better for any given data set. You just run them both and pick the winner. There's also a very similar method, actually the same semantics with a slightly different name in Rx Java. And this is the single AMB array where AMB stands for ambivalent. It doesn't really care which thing runs faster. It's ambivalent. So it'll just pick the one that is going to finish first. So they, they used to have a similarly named method in Project Reactor, but they finally changed it to first with signal, which is a little bit more descriptive than AMB array. This is also very similar to Java's completable future any of method, which is a method that's used. It's called an arbitrary arity method. And there's two of them in Java completable futures. There's all of and any of. And so you can think of AMB array, or you can think of first with signal as being a bit like any of with Java completable futures. You can also think of this as a generalization of Java completable futures applied to either method, which again has the same idea of picking whichever one finishes first when you have two choices. The main difference is that uh, all any of or first with signal or amber array can work for an arbitrary number of monos or singles, et cetera, so completable futures, whereas the apply to either only works on two since it's either or. The next method we're going to talk about here in terms of combining things is called the when method. And this is used to aggregate a bunch of given publishers into a new mono. So here's the when method. You can see it takes a var args array of publisher sources. And you can take a look and see what a publisher is. Publisher is actually one of those interfaces that's defined in Java 9's flow class. So it's kind of the core of the whole um, reactive streams model. And so we have these essentially a vargs array of sources. And what it does, what when does, is it returns a mono to void that will be fulfilled when all the given sources have completed their processing. Now, if there's something goes wrong, if one of the sources has an error or an exception or so on, that causes a cancellation of any results and 
will immediately emit the error signal on the returned mono. So you have to be careful if things are going to fail. You typically use the when combiner method to wait for a fixed but arbitrary number of publishers to complete. And we'll actually take a look at this example when we start talking about fluxes, because there's some really cool examples of, of using this with fluxes. And in fact, if you take a look at the link at the bottom of the slide, which we'll cover later in the course, we won't get to that in this lesson, but uh, there's something called the monos collector, which is basically a Java 8 streams collector whose essentially finalized method is going to take the set of monos that you have and it'll when them. So it basically says, wait for all these monos to finish. And when they're all done, they will materialize. So that's basically a single signal that says everything's done computing. And then at that point, it's gonna go ahead and return a new mono that will complete with the results of all the other monos that have completed. Now, again, you might wonder what the heck is this? And I promise you, we'll talk about this in great detail, but it's a really, really cool example of using the when method to wait for a whole bunch of other things to finish. You typically use when, or one common way to use when is in conjunction with materialize that we talked about here. And what materialize does, and we'll talk about this specifically later, is it transforms the on next, on error, or on complete signals into a signal instance, which will then emit on complete. So it basically says, I'll wait for anything to be emitted and I'll turn that into a completion emission. Interestingly enough, there's really no Rx Java equivalent for when. There's other things you can use to emulate when, things like, for example, uh, the zip array that we talked about before. But there's some really cool things about when, which you can't quite do right out of the box with Rx Java. The interesting correlation, however, or similarity here, is that when is actually very similar to Java completable futures, all of arbitrary arity method. So if you're familiar with all of, then you can think of when is very much the same type of capability. And in fact, the monos collector I mentioned earlier, which we'll cover in later parts of the course, is really comparable to the way that you would use the all of method in Java completable futures.